most of the counties um, have done some of, some of both, some building and some services. And that really varies from county to county. Um, and that's partly why we're looking at some of the differences in the fights today. But what we have seen is a dramatic increase in the number of people who are going into county jail systems. We've seen a dramatic increase in the power of local county sheriffs to make decisions about resources, to make decisions about state policy, I'm sorry, about county policy. And we've also seen weird trickle downs of money happening in a bunch of different ways through the state. So there's this money that's attached specifically to realignment, and then a few years before that, the state of California also allocated billions of dollars to go on the biggest prison building uh, plan in the history of the world. And so there's also that money out there that we have to pay attention to. So the overall project that we're gonna talk about today is trying to keep people out of cages, to bring people home, to keep them home, and to try to figure out how not to keep using jails as a cure-all to all of the kinds of things that the state tells us it does. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm gonna ask each of our esteemed presenters here to introduce themselves. Please tell us your name. Um, if you're with an organization that is fighting one of the jails, um, please say who that is, and then we'll get into the details about what your organizations do and how you fought in a minute. Uh, so my name is James Lee. Uh, I'm with Redwood City's Occupy Group, and uh, we're working in Redwood City to stop the San Mateo County Jail. My name is Tash Wynn. Um, I'm in a group called Sin Vadas. It means without bars in Spanish, and we're out of Santa Cruz. My name is Johnny Valdepeña, and I'm with the Safe Return Project in uh, Richmond, California. My name is Manuel Lafontaine. I'm with uh, All of Us and None a project of legal services for prisoners with children. I'm a native of Daly City, was fighting, um, and then fighting to stop the county jail, San Mateo County, and I'm also recently moved to Alameda County, also trying to fight the resources being put towards law enforcement in, in a bit of um, the community. And I'm gonna try to fill in a little bit, bits and pieces here from Alameda County. Alameda County is currently not involved in an active jail fight, but we need to pay attention to Sheriff Ahern he has been stockpiling money like crazy. Santa Rita is not filled, and that's very, very dangerous in terms of, of um, accepting people from state prisons. And so we'll try to talk about some of the things that he's been up to, too. And so I think if you have information on any of these fights that you want to contribute, holler out. But we'll get the conversation started up here. But don't be shy about, about shouting out. So I'm wondering if we can just start by talking about the status of the fights in each of the counties now. Um, and Johnny, you all are in an interesting situation in Contra Costa County. You successfully fought off one bid, and now you're looking at round two up there. Can you tell us what's going on in Contra Costa County right now? We, we stopped the first jail expansion, uh, God willingly, and uh, it was really tremendous to see uh, it not go up. But uh, what I have realized in, in doing this, that uh, it's gonna take more people like me and myself these people up here to uh, get more people like us to speak about not putting people in them jails, but getting them to speak about you know, the situations behind going in. Um, we're also in a situation in Contra Costa County now where uh, the sheriff has uh, used our strengths uh, saying they need services inside the jail. So he's rallied up and it's kind of took our power, but uh, we still gonna stand in a not have that jail go up by any means necessary because a lot of the people he wants to uh, give services to are looking at quite a bit of time and they may or may not want to take to the services. So we're just looking forward to the fight. And God willing, we can rally up a lot of people to uh, keep the jail from going up. Thank you. Yeah, well, let's talk, let's talk to you next because San Mateo is actually a really interesting county for some of these fights. Because the delay has been, you're not San Mateo. I actually want to talk to James first about San Mateo. Um, because the, um, the fight there has been really protracted. And it's been phase after phase after phase of trying to stall it there. And they're going to go ahead in some ways, it looks like, regardless of whether or not they bankrupt themselves. But I'm wondering if you can talk about some of the dynamics of the jail fight in San Mateo County. Sure. So right now, uh, technically, construction has already started, which uh, is a negative. But 
Um, there are stories out there of jails that have been fully built and then never actually populated because there haven't, there haven't been funds to run them. So what's happening now is uh, the ground's being cleared, uh, pilings are being driven into the ground, uh, but our county has had trouble getting state funding because our county, uh, they're one of the richer counties in the Bay Area and in California, frankly, and uh, because they are one of the richer counties, um, uh, the state doesn't view them as a needy county when it comes to state funding. And uh, uh, if you want to talk about you know, hubris and being prideful, our county uh, started construction uh, thinking that they would get state money. And the way you get state money is you have to apply for it first before you build anything. So because the county just went ahead and kind of steamrolled this project through, the state said, no, you can't have our money. And uh, so we, the last thing that Occupy Redwood right City did uh, with help from Curb and some other groups is that we did kind of a letter writing campaign to stop two uh, funding bills that our state senator tried to uh, push through the legislature at the very last minute in order to fund or bring some more state funds to our county for jail construction. So that's what we've stopped at the moment. Um, they are still building, but they don't have state funds to do it and they're likely gonna try to uh, go through the, bo the bond process so that uh, essentially generations, years down the line, will still be paying for building this jail. Can you talk about the amendment here? Sure. Yeah, so uh, what we did uh, this past Earth Day was we had um, a great protest that uh, um, Curb and Critical Resistance and all of us are not, and a whole bunch of folks came to uh, because, and we chose Earth Day because the land underneath um, where the jail is supposed to be built. Uh, it's built on a road called Chemical Way. Uh, this is a place where um, there used to be industrial, there used to be uh, uh, toxics in the soil, there still were toxic in the soil, toxics in the soil until very, until very recently. And there was a covenant placed on the land saying that you can't build residences there because it's too toxic. Yet a jail you know, where you house people for 24 hours a day, it's okay. So what they eventually ended up uh, doing, and they just went to, the county just went to press with this a couple weeks ago, was they said, oh, well, you know, we cleaned up that land and we cleaned up more than we had to. So uh, it's, you know, it's kind of a small victory, I guess, in the sense that, you know, uh, we got the county to do something that they weren't gonna do initially, uh, to clear out some of the toxics there, but regardless of that, uh, as you probably all know, jails are toxic, regardless of what sort of land yeah. they on. Patash, can you tell us what's going on in Santa Cruz and if you have any information on Monterey County that you think would be interesting to add that into? Yeah, um, as it stands, I don't know the details of Monterey County, but I know as it stands right now, um, San Mateo, since they got like booted out of the line, Monterey is mixed up. And it's like around $165 million and they're also, they, they're applying through multiple funding bodies and um, there's not very much resistance in Monterey at all. And there was just a vote last Tuesday um, with very, very little resistance. Um, so that's the update on Monterey County. Um, as for Santa Cruz County, we have a very, we have a sheriff who has won like multiple awards in California, and he is like the golden sheriff of all sheriffs, right? Um, and so what's really nuanced about our jail proposal is that he's not building beds. He's actually, there's a, the wing that he's building in is an existing wing where 250 beds sit empty. Now, we're telling him, you should totally take, we don't know why you haven't taken a wrecking ball to this building yet. Um, and he's like, well, you know, what we're gonna do is we're going to build classrooms. So we're gonna make our jail the new social service provider. Um, we're gonna build these 64 type, you know, beds that are dormitory where the doors don't lock. So it makes you feel like you're living on a college campus. We're gonna incentivize, um, we're gonna incentivize these um, AB 109 inmates who are there for much longer um, to occupy these spaces. And also, um, kind of, he also talked about how he was making it like low security. So um, that's what the jail fight looks like like right now, and it makes it much more harder for us to fight because a lot of the, um, there are a lot of programs that are existing in Santa Cruz County Main Jail and in our Roundtree Detention Center where this new site is going to be built that can't put on their programs because they need space and they need these resources. So it's a tricky fight for us. Um, and yeah, that's where we're at. I want to introduce everybody to Lisa Marie Latore. 
Um, you just tell us where you're coming from today and talk a little bit about what's going on in San Francisco town. I sure can. Hi, everybody. I apologize for being late. And to directly answer the question where I just came from, there's an action happening at 16th and Mission right now in protest of the increased criminalization of homeless folks and folks within the SROs in that area. So we were out there. The Coalition on Homelessness has been fighting that fight alongside this jail fight, which are 100% linked in our city. Um, so I apologize for being late and I'm very happy to be joining this conversation. Um, I think similarly to like on the sort of spectrum of this jail fight that we have in the state of California, we're closer to the spectrum of Santa Cruz, but not quite um, that intense in terms of um, the nuances in that regard. In San Francisco, we have a jail replacement project that is looking to tear down um, our decrepit and old and awful downtown um, 850 Bryant Jail, and the idea is to replace it with a state-of-the-art, brand new, amazing replacement jail facility that is smaller than the current jail that we have at 850 Bryant. So that is, that's, that's what is being proposed here. It's definitely being chock full of programming, definitely being chock full of education. It's closer to families. All of those things are the sort of talking points that we are fighting against in San Francisco, which is in direct contradiction to the rest of the moves that the city is making um, regarding you know, um, fighting criminalization and um, you know, simple reforms in our jail system. So we have this really interesting fight where we've got a sheriff saying that it will make his career to build this amazing state-of-the-art jail in the name of reducing the jail population. Um, so that's sort of quoting Michelle Alexander in the new Jim Crow, that we have a problem in San Francisco with locking up African Americans, so let's build a nicer jail to lock them up in, closer to their families. So that that is the sort of liberal, progressive rhetoric that we're fighting, um, really trying to get the point through. I mean, there's many different points, one being that we have the most underpopulated jail in the, in the state, um, so we actually have absolutely no need for anything. Um, we could 100% shut down county jails three and four today in this moment and still have empty beds in our jail system. We have a jail that has been shut down but not demolished in San Mateo. Um, so we have all of these, these pieces that seem very logical, and, see, and we have a DA who's saying that he's pushing for bail reform, pretrial release, sentencing reform. We have our sheriff, while he's proposing this jail, is also proposing to expand pretrial release, which would reduce our jail population even more. So we have a logical situation in front of us that just doesn't quite get through the heads of either pub the public or the public officials. So that's, that's where we're at in San Francisco. So the way that the money has worked is it's going piece by piece. So we are applying for state funding like all the other counties. We don't, because we have an underpopulated jail, um, supposedly we are at the higher end of receiving that money because there's those incentives being put towards the state money. So we would get 80 million at best if, we, if our contract is accepted of state funding. We've allocated 3 million to the land acquisition, meaning we bought the land where they want to build the new replacement jail. Um, and aside from that, um, it will go piece by piece through our budget process because our construction isn't slated until 2017. Um, so there's both that budget fight happening where we're trying to, there's piece by piece. It really came up in August during our budget fight that we even found out about this replacement jail project, so it's kind of a new fight. And so it started around the three million land acquisition where everyone sort of went, wait, we're fighting for crumbs here for housing, we're fighting for crumbs here for education, for social services, aid services. And yet there's this chunk of money, which $3 million for a $30 million budget is actually a chunk of change. And so for that to go to land acquisition sort of raised the heckles of many people in San Francisco. So it is not funded. Our project is looking at being about $700 million after debt services are paid um, 